All right, so one of the things I wanted to try to do um, in this video is like literally try to do like share some thoughts like in real time while I'm having them for whatever they're worth on the basis of let's talk through like things you ought to be thinking while you're while you're running these things, right? Like why do we do the things that we do? What works well? What works poorly? What will work better? So I'm going to try through like some... Um, microphone gain management and some other things. I'm going to try to make it so you're not just listening to a nonstop litany of like buttons clicking in the background because uh, I have a video like that um, accidentally before I knew exactly how this overlay works. So I'm going to try very hard to avoid that. We'll find out at the end if it works. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to play this uh, picked an 82. Why? I mean, 82 is easy. Um, nothing all that significant in the affixes. And, and I'll just be very frank. I'm trying to make it not that hard um, because the, the tactics, the strategies, what you're trying to do, the gameplay remains the same, however hard it is, right? The harder it is, the more tight and the more perfect, the more exacting your gameplay has to be. But it's the same gameplay. I mean, you know, the, the people who are playing Little League are playing substantially the same game as the people who are playing, you know, in the major leagues. It's just much, much harder. And you have to be much, much better. And you have to execute much, much more consistently. But it's the same rules, same theories. Everything's the same. Um, and yeah, I did just compare an 82 Nightmare Dungeon to Little League. But when you're playing, you know, Bulwark, eh, it kind of is. Um, so let's go. You know, I don't want to do that. I want to do this and because I didn't click over in time now I got to remember where the F this is there we go pulls the damned um, let's do this together and it's been a little bit since I've done one of these so let's hope that I still remember how to do it and if I don't then you'll never see this video anyway I'll just not publish it in shame the nice thing about not being a Twitch streamer is I don't have to be perfect all the time. I can just show you all the wins and hide all the losses. Um, although anybody who watches my game knows I have a ton of losses. So, why? I, I don't want ghosts. Friggin' ghosts are tiny. Right now, ghost damage is really significant. And it's been my experience in addition to that, that you often start with just, like, really difficult mobs. And so, I figured as long as that's what they're gonna do, let's just blow everybody up. But it's very common in my experience that I want to start, like, with a, with a big suck. Um, and you'll notice me trying to run through here and prioritize. This is the reason that you run a lot of Ghost Walker, right? Is I know I just have to be able to um, to run these, you know, fairly run through people, do what I need to do, um, and you can see what I mean about this, this amazing quantity of ghost damage. There. We We'll just clean this right up. And so you do, I think that you do, frequently end up very frequently um, doing a lot of running around as you're looking to try to find high priority targets, as you're trying to look around and say, well, here's who really, in everything that I'm doing, here are the people who really need to kill. Like elites, I will usually prioritize elites um, for all of the reasons that you might imagine. Right? Like, I don't think that that's particularly shocking. Okay? I can just see through the wall, which is what's confusing me. Um, not always. You know, the correct kind of elites, maybe I wouldn't care about. Um, depends on who they are. Depends on what they're doing. Depends on what else is going on. Right? In the match, at the time. Um, I may not, not particularly care. But normally, elites are going to be a priority item. And they're going to be somebody that you want to chase down, somebody you want to get rid of very, very quickly. I'm um, just like those sorts of raids that are setting those stupid amp up beams. If I see that happening, I want to find either the person who's the recipient of that beam, or I want to find 
whoever is sending out that beam, and I want to end them. Because that red carpet, you know, line of death that those archers will send out, like, screw that. I don't want it. I'm not interested in it. I want to see it end. Because that puts out a ton of damage. Uh, similarly here, we can kind of say, like, one of the things I want is I want to get rid of the summoners. Like, I don't want to have to fight 4,000 of these little exploding idiots, right? If I can get rid of the people who bring all those people in, <laughs> I do like it when they just stand in one place like that. Like, that makes my job a lot easier, right? But I don't want to fight these guys. I want to fight these guys here. Because if I can wipe all these dudes out, then, you know, I can do whatever I need to do to deal with all of those little miniature cycles, right? What I want, though, is to kill the summoners so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Same thing. Same thing. I always feel like when the psychos run up on me, I'm like, it's a, it's a race to see who's going to get to blow up first. Do I get to blow up first? Do they get to blow up first? And again, you know, as long as I've got bulwark up, I don't care. Because they're a little explosion. It ain't going to cut through my bulwark. Um, but I still want to go before they go. I want to get there first. It's a race. I'm the, you know, human, not the computer program. I want to win. Um, all right. I bet you it is diagonally across. We're going to find out. One of the things that anybody who's seen my videos before knows is I don't have these things memorized, despite how, like, repetitive it is. All right. So, so there we go. We got a guy who's sending out that red carpet. I want him over. Woo. Um, apparently, I get hit by something when I was not looking. Um, I have no idea what that is, and I'm sure I don't care, but you're all going to have to watch me pick it up anyway, because I'm so not used to speedrunning these things that I just, you know, the, the, the instincts take over. <laughs> I'm like, I want that thing. <laughs> so, um... Um, you will also see a lot of just, you want to kind of, often you want to push through these guys. Not all, all the time. Not, you know, for everything. But usually, like, the, the AI for how they position the characters is actually pretty good. And they'll take the people who are long-range damage dealers, and they really will hide them in the back. Like, the way that you should. The way that someone who's intelligent would. Um... And so, oftentimes, you're going to be like pretty well served by walking through that front line. Like, the front line often really does exist, like, just to be people getting in your way while the people who do a lot of damage um, hide in the back line. So, um, again, it's a good use case for a ghost walker. It's a good reason to have that equipped. Um, but it's also, it has to influence, like, your playstyle, right? Like, it, all of those abilities, Ghost Walker, um, anything else that gives you Unstoppable that you might have equipped, none of it's going to be particularly useful um, unless you use it to push through the mob and get to the people who you really need to kill. Um, and so, you know, it's... You gotta remember that ultimately your build does depend on you, both playing correctly to the build and then also playing correctly in general, right? Like, um, I'm not gonna say that just any old idiot can play Bulwark, even though I frequently tell people I'm just some idiot playing Bulwark. But I can get away with it because idiot though I am, and, you know, 166 uh, millisecond lag, though I had just a little bit ago, I know the basics of the build. I know how it functions. I know how it kills people. And so it doesn't matter um, if I'm you know, dumb in general. There's a, a thing I know. Okay, here's another good use case for subcard, because that is only going to spawn once. Oftentimes, in that situation, you will see multiple respawns of those enemies. And this is also why I like Cataclysm, since it's such a long lasting ult that it keeps that suck procking, right, for a very long time. Here's what I mean by sometimes you want to try a walk. Let's see what's back here. If there was a corpse bow, <clears throat> you know that they would be hiding that back here, right? And so let's try walking through it. Let's just try getting to the place that they don't want us to get. 
and just sort of operate on the assumption that what we want is the opposite of what they want. And so if they're trying to keep us from getting skills, if they're keeping people away from us, it's because they want to keep us away from those people. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to walk through them. I'm going to get over there. We're going to find out what's going on, right? So that's got to be a big part of your thought process is just where do they seem to want me to be? Where do they seem to want to be? And how can I play and position and just sort of be where they don't want me to be? How can I be where I want to be in the way that's going to work best for me? I'm sure there's going to be nothing interesting in here. We'll just put this board I could have. Here I wasn't going to use my bulwark to kill that guy, and it expired anyway. So it's kind of like a, just not going to happen. The other thing that you will often benefit from doing is not popping that bulwark explode the absolute minute that you get it up. Oftentimes, you know, you just kind of wait. Just wait for them to come in a little closer. Wait for them to send the rest of the troops, right? Just wait, and then you can move on top of them, blow everybody up. But there's often some advantage for being like a half second late on the draw. There's some utility in letting a couple more of them come in nice and close. So. Not, oh, I'm, I was just thinking to myself, there must be an event going on here that I have missed the beginning of. And indeed there is. And knowing that means I need to do this because if there's an event going on, then I often want suck. And I, in fact, often want suck like I want to hit it the minute that it occurs, because I want it to, like, go the whole time. I want it to start working its way off CD, even while I'm killing people. So there's some utility in these um, events to just trying to hit that, like, the minute that they start. Um, other people will say, you know, depending, on what's going on. Maybe you want to wait until the elites start showing up for something where you're taking a lot of ranged damage, right? And that is this mob. For something like that, then I think you want to take it like immediately and just start running it off of CD. Um, for most of the advanced um, levels that keep three people alive is never going to work. I gotta tell you, I mean, so I've run. I've run a number of hundred level nightmare dungeons. I've had a couple of times in just like content here and there where I've kept all three of those idiots alive. And I promise you, like that's an accomplishment. <laughs> I always felt good coming back out of those um, because it's so hard at higher levels to keep those idiots alive. They will not help you. They will stand in poison. They will stand in whatever it is that you don't want them to get hit by. Um, and they're, well, they're, they're, they're idiots. I don't know what to tell you. So um, those are some thoughts. Uh, I may try to post another one of these um, to share some thoughts on maybe a, a level that has more people that do close in damage because obviously how you play against uh, ranged or at a distance enemies, a little different than how you play against people who you get to play close up on. So I may try and do that too. Hopefully some of this thought process explanation slash explication uh, has been useful. Um, keep enjoying the build. See y'all.